feeling kind of sick right now. <laughs> I know football is only a game, and I'm going to be saying that quite a bit <laughs> to myself to start 2018. But if I don't say that, then I'm liable to not only go cuckoo, but I'm liable to tear this office up piece by piece. And I'll be in trouble, too, because the wife just redid this office um, to ideal conditions over the weekend. So don't want to don't want to make this office into a tornado just because I'm upset. And it is no question a heartbreaker for the Sooners. One of the most heartbreaking losses in program history. And this is a team that's been playing football for a long time. Has won a lot of big games. Won a lot of national championships. And to be up 17 in the national semifinal, six ticks before halftime, and then after that having the game change and having Georgia making the necessary adjustments on the defensive line, which I thought was the biggest difference in the game, by the way, because let's face it, Sooners had about 340 yards in that first half. Second half, it was a different story. In that third quarter, um, I think they had, what, 39 total yards, and almost all of it came on one run by Rodney Anderson. And I'll talk more about him in a second. Um, for the Sooners to play so well in that first half, especially offensively, and to see them not come with the same intensity, not be able to match Georgia's intensity in that second half other than one drive on offense. It was it was really disappointing to see because th this Sooner team accomplished so much. Of course, that doesn't change it. Th this game doesn't change the accomplishments of this team. Uh, this game also doesn't change the outlook of Baker Mayfield. It wasn't one of his best games, and Georgia is a big part of that, but also, to the indecisiveness that Mayfield at times and then forcing it early in the fourth quarter on that costly interception, which led to a Georgia touchdown. This game doesn't change the fact that Baker's one of the greatest Sooners to ever live. It's heartbreaking because you play a terrific first half. You think that momentum is going to build to the second half. After all, you do get the ball to start that second half. Oh, you just got out-muscled, out-physicaled, and looked very tentative in quarter three and for a large part in quarter number four. Not being able to finish the deal. You know, you're up seven with a minute to go. And then a true freshman quarterback, Jake Fromm, he may not be an all-star, but he didn't have to be. All he had to do was complete the short passes and don't screw up. And for the large part, that's the type of game he played. Jake Fromm, I'll tell you what, he was, uh, you know, I spotted his veins. He had it. He, he was pivotal. And he, des he deserves credit. But, of course, the Georgia backfield. We knew they were good. And I, I said it. I said it during the weekly matchup show a few days ago. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Where I talk about the Sooners got to wrap up after first contact or else they're going to give up the home run runs, meaning big plays, and that's exactly what happened with Michelle and, of course, with Nick Chubb, the two-headed running monster attack for UGA. This this just sucks beyond belief. I mean, you're thinking, man, the national championship, that game is within your grasp, and to play that second half the way it was played, and for Georgia – Making those adjustments and seeing a defensive line that just wanted it more than Oklahoma's offensive line, hard to watch. But um, I, I know what people out there who may not be a big-time fan of either team is going to be saying. You just watched one of the best football games in a long time as far as drama, and, and that's true. I mean, double overtime, yeah. I, I suppose that years from now, people are going to be saying, yeah, that was one heck of a game during that 2017 season on January 1st, 2018, when Georgia – one in double overtime. But as you as you notice, though, I'm going to talk about um, the overtime a little bit, but I want to give props to the Rodney Anderson because I said it on my weekly matchup show. He was the biggest key to this game, and you saw in that first half, you know, Georgia had very few answers against him. Matter of fact, Georgia, they're used to giving up 110 yards rushing per game. Rodney Anderson had more than that in half number one. He was unstoppable. He was so pivotal with a couple of first half touchdowns, and again, I don't think he touched the ball enough in this game. I don't. And sometimes Oklahoma got a little too cute, as you notice, know, especially in the overtime period. You know, Baker, for the most part, didn't throw it downfield in the overtime periods. Trying the, you know, handoff to the receivers, to Smallwood, to wh whoever um, oh, you wanted to use as far as trying to create speed mismatches. And Roquan Smith, didn't hear him in the first half, didn't hear his name called, but second half, he became a factor. And again, that's because the Georgia defensive line set the tempo for that second half, being a lot more aggressive, and that allowed Roquan Smith to do his part as well and in overtime as well. Sooners, again, they're, they're going to be questioned for not being aggressive enough. And again, I know what you're thinking. You risk turning the ball over. You risk losing the game. But to me, tentative play creates just as much of a risk for losing a game 
as being the, the, the offense that you've been. And you might be saying, well, Georgia creates situations where maybe you're not comfortable being in. I, I'm saying that in that second half, that, that Sooner offense, just it was a complete transformation. It looked so different and different in a bad way. Yeah, they had the, the nice touchdown drive to tie it at 38. Okay, I, I understand that. But the first half, it was balance. It, it was perfect balance passing as well as rushing. And, again, I, I think the bottom line, second half, what it all boiled down to is which line was going to dictate the pace of the game. And it was the Georgia defensive line. That front four made life havoc for Oklahoma in the second half. Looking at what kind of year it was for OU, is one of the best seasons that they've had in a long time. It, it really was, and they responded well after the Iowa State loss. And for about a half, it looked like the Sooners were going to not only beat Georgia, but beat up on Georgia. But we learned about football one big thing. It's a 60-minute game. And isn't it ironic that the Sooners lost this game the opposite way of how they've won so many games this season? This season, and I mentioned this on the weekly matchup show as well, they made halftime adjustments to perform better. On the, you know, to perform better, we saw that you know against Kansas State. We saw that against Oklahoma State. We saw that in the second half of the TCU game, the second TCU game, the Big Twelve title. And it worked. But this time, oh, you got a dose of their own medicine. It was Georgia that made the adjustments. And it was Georgia that, let's face it, the Bulldogs in, in, in that second half, in that third quarter, it, it was a nightmare on, on both sides. The passing ability of Oklahoma in that overtime was almost non existent. And of course, the blocked field goal. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, for people out there who are thinking, well, you shouldn't go for the field goal anyway because Georgia, the, the way the Oklahoma defense is playing, they could very well give up a touchdown and lose the game anyway, whether you make the field goal or not. I didn't have a problem with them going for the field goal. Obviously, <laughs> the result of the field goal, yeah, I mean, who knew? But, but like I said, big players make big plays, and Georgia's big-time players did just that in a game like this. Jake Fromm, you know, after the – after the first half in which Georgia's offense, you know, they had 14 points, uh, really revved it up in the second half. And when the running game is doing its part, Jake Fromm, the Georgia true freshman quarterback, he can do his part. It's not with big numbers, but it's with efficiency. And that's what they had. Georgia, by the way, they overcame one big thing in this game, and I'm sure that uh, this is going to be mentioned a lot. Georgia's one of the best teams in the country as far as third down conversions. In this game, they weren't very good on third down at all, but yet they still found other ways to step up to the plate. Biggest down for Georgia in this game wasn't third down. It was first down. That's where they gained most of their yardage, especially on the ground. Like I said, though, I thought Rodney Anderson played one hell of a game. I thought he played his heart out. You know, we saw, um, we saw C.D. Lamb struggle early in the first half, but eventually coming through not only with catches, but also with key blocks as well. Um, defensively, you know, Kenneth Murray, he showed that he was a freshman. I mean, there were times where he was just flat out out of position, and that costed OU. But uh, and that's not putting all the blame on Kenneth Murray, but some of his decisions as far as pursuit at certain holes ended up making Oklahoma empty-handed and led to Georgia big plays. So the Georgia season continues. Again, it's either against Georgia or Alabama, and right now I don't give a damn about that game. Uh, best of luck to the Bulldogs. Go win next week. Become national champions. All that shit. As far as Oklahoma, um, what a heartbreaker. Um, what a heartbreaker. You come so close, and basically now you get thrown back with the other 120, um, 126, 127 teams at this stage who have not won the national championship for this year. Um, good year for Lincoln Riley and the recruits. I'm not sure if you've heard, um, so we get ready to wrap this up. Um, it's going to be another terrific class as uh, National Signing Day came early um, during the latter part of December, and OU has landed a lot of uh, big-time recruits in the 2019 class as far as verbal commitments. It could be one of the best classes 
um, one of the top two or three best classes in all of college football. So Oklahoma will continue to reload, and I'm not saying they'll be the team to beat next year, but at least they'll still be in contention. And right now, I would challenge you to tell me who's going to knock Oklahoma off the Big 12 pedestal. I can't think of anybody right now. Um, Oklahoma State lost a lot of players. I know Texas Tech returned 17 or 18 starters, but they still have to prove that they can play defense of a higher caliber, and I haven't seen that since, well, never. <laughs> Texas, you know, people keep saying, you know, maybe this is the year that Texas contends, but until I, um, until I actually see it with my own eyes, um, I'm not going to drink that Kool-Aid. Uh, TCU under Gary Patterson, they usually contend, but they lose their fair share of talent as well. So, and, and, and who knows about Bill Snyder? Who knows if he's going to be back another year for Kansas State? But, but K-State this year, um, I know they won their bowl game, but for the large part, kind of a disappointing season. So, um, right now, Oklahoma, I think it's them and, and everybody else as far as Big 12. Let me go ahead and take this opportunity. Um, again, like I said, a game like that where you lose it in double overtime and you have a 17-point lead and you can't hold on. Um, you'll be thinking about that for a long time if you're a Sooner fan. By the way, to all the Oklahoma Sooner fans who've been watching my videos this year and maybe since the duration of uh, the videos, since they were first incepted back in 2009, thank you again for your support. One heck of a year for the Sooners, and again, it sucks that it has to end now, uh, but they'll remain contenders. And uh, now to the Kenneth Murray Show and to Baker Mayfield. Man, thank you for one hell of a career, regardless of what happened uh, tonight. To Mark Andrews, to um, Orlando Brown, uh, to Obo, to those seniors, um, to Stephen Parker, um, who had a defensive touchdown tonight. Um, thank you, thank you for for your efforts and for racking up several Big Twelve titles and you know getting to the Final Four. It is an accomplishment in itself, even though it will not result into a national championship. And for all the other subscribers who aren't fans of Oklahoma, you might be a fan of uh, Georgia or or Texas or Oklahoma State. And you might have been a subscriber for a while or you're a new subscriber. Again, thank you for your support. And please continue to watch the videos and continue to spread the word about them. Sooners lose by six in overtime to UGA as the Bulldogs will move on to the national championship game. And for Oklahoma, they see their hopes for getting to the national championship game slip away. Boomer Sooner.